KCHW 102.7, 819. Scott and Jane, your KCHW morning show and special guests in the studio. Uh, we were already talking a few minutes ago with uh, Don McLaughlin. Welcome, Don. Thanks for being here. Good morning. And uh, one of the most lovely ladies in Chihuahua and one of my favorites. It's Sharon Ludwig. How you doing, Sharon? I am doing wonderful. All right. You sound like maybe you're getting over a little bit of a cold. Uh, no? Well. No? Just, uh, just morning? Just morning. Just morning. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, well, we got you all, all taken care of with a little Lodi water there. You're good? And Don's yeah. got some tea. And now we're going to have a conversation about PACA. I bet you guys are so excited uh, with the new theater. And uh, I think we should start off, though, maybe uh, some new people in town um, that aren't familiar with PACA. Can one of you just give us like a brief history of PACA, and then we'll move into where we are today? Sure. We started as a subcommittee from Community Celebrations. Their goal for the last 40 years has been to uh, have a cultural arts center, a a performing theater, and uh, it just didn't seem to happen. And there came a point where uh, they uh, assigned a committee, and I was on that committee, to look into the feasibility of using our building that we had at that time, which is... um, the King Street building. So we had a meeting and we invited Dawn and we invited community and we got started and we looked at that building and Dawn and Tom both said, it's never going to be a theater. It just doesn't have the bones. And so we uh, started meeting weekly, met weekly for a couple years back in 2008, 2009, and started working on uh, becoming our own entity, becoming a 5013C, whatever that is. 50, yeah, you know. 501C, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have a bunch of different levels. But <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. We got that status, and we've just been working since then. And luckily, we were able to buy the city shop this last year. Now, they also call that the old armory. Yes. Um, at one point, wait, I think it was a Columbia Coat Factory. Yeah, yeah I yeah. sewed in that coat factory really? for a while. <laughs> yeah, years ago when I first came to Chihuahua. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Pacific Trail at that time. Yeah. Um, and I uh, was at Chamber this morning, heard some good news. The city is uh, thinking they're going to be through with their building sometime in December and have an open house for their building the end of December, 1st of January, which might put us in... Being able to clean up a little early, it, nice. it, we're just really excited about having a building. So originally it was like a 18 months for them to get out or something, but it, it yes. looks like it's going to happen sooner, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, how fun. How yeah. Fun. It's still, we still won't have an open house until later on into, because it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of work. It's a, a shop and it smells like cars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it smells exactly. like diesel and oil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've got a broom at my house ready to go down and start sweeping right. as soon as we get that. Right. And if, no, if people haven't been in there too, um, it was really great. A few months ago, you guys had kind of a walkthrough and, and an unveiling of your, your drawings and drafts for what the building uh, will eventually be. And I was really amazed at the height of the ceiling in there. That's going to be really great for a theater. And uh, it was really neat to go through that process with you. And, and you could see what it was going to turn into. And then having that back that goes all the way to the creek. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. So. The potential, yeah. yeah. Well, and all the people in town that are excited about having a theater. Oh, yeah. And all the uses that it will have will just be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we think it's just going to explode, you know, build it and they will come type thing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it will. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're, we're, we have limited space here, even though we moved into bigger settings. I know we're, we're waiting with bated breath. And, and I've been pulling on uh, Don's ear, you know, he was giving me going one time. He said, well, maybe starting off with 100 seats and like this. And I was like, dude, if we, we, we need to do chihuahua has got talent there and we're going to need, you know, close to 200 seats. So yeah. what can we do? Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I think that's the thing about uh, PACA. We started eight years ago. We formalized eight years ago, and uh, we stuck through it through thick and thin, and we identified this building as the building, the right location because it's close to the schools. Um, It's in the center of town. It's going to make a lot better performing and visual arts space than it ever was as a garage. (laughs) Um, The city, our new mayor here is an outstanding mayor, and she saw the vision of this and said, Yes, we can build a new building, but we've got to sell two buildings in order to be able to afford to do that. And so they consolidated. So it took us eight years, but we got to the point where um, this is going to be a reality. 
we now have to renovate it, make it into a performing space. But it's not the um, Chuila Center for the Arts is what the building is going to be called. PACA is our board, and we'll retain that name. Uh, we give awards every year, as you know, and mm-hmm. you've helped us with. And so the PACA awards will go on again this year. So February 27th, we're going to carry our banner, our old PACA banner, uh, down there uh, as part of our ceremony uh, with the event and raise the new banner in in the space in all its greasy glory and uh, (laughs) have some hot chocolate and hot cider and walk around and look at the space and and look at the new drawings for the for the building what's going to look like and talk about the programming so now the big i guess challenge for you it's the same kind of challenge all no, on nonprofits have money right money and and we're going through that right now too trying to to raise a much smaller amount than than what you guys need right. and, and several areas to go um you know, you can do do grant writing and stuff like that, but sometimes it's kind of hard because you have the matching funds. I was looking at your guys' beautiful brochure that you put out, and uh, do you want to explain? Um, this is a good call out. Maybe maybe we have a millionaire out in the audience just waiting to support a worthy cause like this. <laughs> I run down the different levels of memberships people can help with, and talk about what your plans are for for fundraising to get this uh, get the construction going. Well, um, <laughs> we. We will take any amount of money you would like to give to us, okay. from a dollar fifty to a million. Okay. Yes, absolutely. But we do have for this fund drive. We have uh, designations. A founder gives a hundred thousand or more. A visionary gives fifty fifty thousand. A builder gives ten thousand. Architect five thousand. Designer one thousand. Enthusiast five hundred dollar donation, and a supporter is fifty dollar donation. Um, those people will be uh, recognized if they want. Some people want to give money and don't want to be recognized. And we will have uh, recognition in the foyer that will list those people on this initial fund drive. And then ongoing ones, we will have other categories and other names later. This is just our initial one. Um, We're excited about uh, this. We've got people who want to give money and have said over the last eight years, we want to give money, but we want to see that you're really going to do this. Because the goal of a theater has been in Chihuahua for years, years, and it's just not happened. It hasn't it materialized, and now it is. Now it is. I kind of went is. through the same thing with this, going around before we were on the air and asking for donations and stuff. And, and some people wouldn't because they're thinking, you know, is this, is this guy really going to do it? Is he a flake or like that? And then it was funny, and once it was on the air and, and you got established, and then they were like... Uh, okay, right, you're doing it. Here, here you yeah. go. Here's a little help. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I want to just tell you, um, I am a visionary, but I do not have $50,000. <laughs> 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 no. uh, but I will help you with a microphone whenever you need it. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's great. Okay. And right. we uh, are compiling a list of volunteers and what you would like to do. And so uh, they could get a, anybody could get a hold of anybody that's on the board or uh, check out our, our new website and... Um, and we want to know, do you, can you paint? Can you, uh, you know, sweep a broom clean? Can you uh, climb up on a ladder, you know, things like that? Can you do things? Are you I'll an electrician? I'll volunteer, Scott, to go up any ladder. <laughs> 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 because we do need people to help us. You do. You know, you know. And you may not have the money. You, but you can still be a visionary and come down and help. Sure. Jean had to lift the uh, five gallons of water up on top of the cooler this morning. So. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> uh, I'm a Because right. yeah, it does. <laughs> it, it takes a lot of people doing different things to, to, to make it all happen. Yeah, I, Absolutely. I think the thing about PACA, like all other arts groups here in Chewila, is that 90% of what we do is volunteer. We have a lot of volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Sharon's a volunteer. All the board members are volunteers. And all of us have given our own money. Um, I've always said if I had won the lottery, uh, this would already be done. We could have paid for it. Um, but I don't play the lottery, so... <laughs> you I, have to play uh, to win. Huh? Yeah, you have to play to win, they tell me. Um, but uh, when you look at the overall scheme of things, um, that's still our strongest asset, are the volunteers. The people who are going to create the art that are going to be there working on a daily basis. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can take the time to go down and get their hands dirty or build a set or 
hang lights or, or paint a beautiful picture that we can hang up in our new gallery. Um, but they can help us through funding. Um, if, you, if you break the funding down into uh, thirds, uh, one third of it will have to be cash. Another third will be through grants. And another third will be what we call in-kind donations. So um, I've done an in-kind donation of my experience as a theater manager. You know, I did this for 35 years. So I know how other people operate in other places and how they get funded. And uh, we're going to be looking for regional and statewide support, not just from Chuila. Um, it's um <laughs> that's funny a phone goes off and everybody there's, reaches there's, for their hindquarters there's somebody, <laughs> somebody calling me right now wanting to donate uh, and so the in-kind donation is a very big very big thing uh, we will not receive state funding it will not be a, a prevailing wage project uh, we're pouring volunteer hours at a lot of this and uh uh, but even volunteers need uh, materials. You know, we can put up the sheetrock to build the green room and, and redo the dressing rooms. Uh, we can probably do some of the plumbing and, and electrical work that has to be done. We have to be supervised by a professional, and it has to be inspected. And we have, we have to meet green codes like any, anybody else that's renovating nowadays. So... We're, we're hoping for other professional people to step up and say, hey, we can help you out with that. And uh, in, in turn, uh, if you donate to our project, your name's going to be on the wall of that theater forever. Um, we put uh, these categories together basically so that we could give proper tribute to people that uh, help us out. All right. All right. So where, what is the new website? And uh, do, is it ready to go, I guess, would be the question. Is it, is it up and running? It is up and running, and it is not listed back here. Okay, well. Hmm. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> cut you some slack because we know it's brand new. So, yeah, so, so Joe well, was telling me the other what day. we had is we had these brochures printed before we had everything finalized, and so we've ordered cute stickers that are the same color that are going to go over these <laughs> so i get to paste stickers over them and they're supposed to be coming in today or tomorrow okay so and it'll have the website and it'll yeah. have the website and the new <laughs> email site and everything well yeah. and chihuila center for the arts dot com will be the yeah you can, you can google google that up um i just want to say um a little something about the uh, chihuila center for the arts um We've been called PACA, Chihuahua Performing and Cultural Arts Center. And like I said before, uh, the board will remain with that name, and we will use the PACA name for our annual awards and those kinds of things. But Chihuahua Center for the Arts is the name of the building. And uh, our website, our Facebook page, um, will all have that title. It gets so. a little confusing. It's it's kind of the same way for the radio. The radio station's KCHW 102.7, but the, the, the board that operates it is the Northeast Washington Community Radio. Guild. That's correct. So, yep. so same kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, same All right. kind. All right, so very exciting. Um, so we've got uh, the Chihuahua Center for the Arts dot com, you said, but if someone uh, wants to be involved, donate, and, and they want to talk to someone, where should they go? Should they go to the website and email? Should you the guys want to throw out a phone number? Yeah, yes, the, they can. The website will ha have a dedicated phone number on it. Okay. So, um, I, I'm feeling like next Monday we'll be ready for prime time with the uh, website. Uh, Gail Johannes is an artist that lives in Chuila who paints and does photography and is very involved in the art scene. Uh, she's designing our website and uh, uh, has been a great new board member for us. Um, Shelley Stevens uh, is a donor as well as the parent of two... Uh, very talented young people that have come through our uh, stage time theater school program and our Jenkins High School program. Um, also from Jenkins High School, uh, Alan Stone is a, is a graduate. Um, Matt Hales is an advisor for us. 
and Matt uh, learned to build sets in the old cafeteria with Sherry Frizzell back in the day, <laughs> and uh, was a student of Janet in uh, stage time, was a student of mine when I was teaching on the faculty at Eastern Washington University. And he went on to Carnegie Mellon University and got an MFA in the technical theater. And now he builds the largest rock and roll sets in the world. Can you tell me about that? That's yeah. pretty awesome. And so. Matt has been advising us on the design of the facility um, and is helping us identify equipment that we need to run this facility in a, in a professional fashion. Now, so. obviously, several different stages to the building, um, you know, a, a, as funds are available and stuff. Well, can you kind of just give us a brief description of what the first stage right. uh, is envisioned Fa as? We call it phase one. Uh, phase one of the Chuila Center for the Arts will open with a 60 by 60 foot theater, square foot, uh, not square footage. It's actually 60 foot long and 60 feet wide. Uh, we can seat up to 250 in concert seating, um, but it will be a flexible staging configuration, which means we can set it up arena style for a play, we can set it up proscenium style for a ballet or a concert. Uh, we can do a thrust style configuration for certain events, or we can empty the whole room and do a trade show in there, or a ski swap. Nice. But no vomitorium. No vomitorium. <laughs> sorry. You missed that, Sharon. It was our big word of the day. We would have to blast a hole in that concrete floor and get down below it before we could have a vomitorium. Oh. But, um, we will have, um, at this time, year one looks like there'll be 120 performance nights. Uh, in the facility. Wow. Wow. And that includes Park Avenue Players, uh, Stage Time Theater, the high school theater, dance, and music programs uh, will be in there. We expect to have four professional concerts. Um, and being a small concert space, it might be a place where they will do two or three concerts in one weekend. Now, have you penciled us in? You are on there for uh, it, it's um, the first Saturday of May every year. So the right. fir the first Saturday uh, the first uh, Saturday in May after the show's open, you make sure we're we're in there and we're right. on it. Well, so. Chuila's Got Talent uh, is something all of us have enjoyed, and it is uh, when we started out doing our events, we used to have a variety show. It was you know a number of different um, performance groups that would come and 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 and. Uh, help us out with our fundraising. Uh, we're moving a little bit away from that, partly because we have a lot of other groups in town that can do that. Uh, PACA is facility driven. That's what we do. We're, we were put together to get it done, to build a building for the arts. Um, the phase one, uh, we're starting with bathrooms. <laughs> That's kind of a necessity. I, yeah. I, I, I got to the point at one time, if I ever hear the term bathroom again i'm gonna throw up in the vomitoria uh, <laughs> but it is essential that we have a space that people are comfortable in uh, we have had to address the, the needs of heating and air conditioning it needs to be a year-round facility uh, we need to have comfortable seats but they have to be able to stack and move and uh, so all of the planning for the facility has been done with those kinds of guidelines. So we're going to build a, a southern um, addition to the armory building. That's the first thing to go up, and we're hoping to break ground on that as soon as we can in the spring. Um, and that will house the bathrooms, concession stand, box office. People and don't the realize gallery. there's a ton of laws that go into building a bathroom. Right. Oh, the, yeah. yeah. There is. It's absolutely. Uh, yeah. I've managed places before where you were going to remodel, and boy, you have to have the bathroom stuff ADA right. compliant and, That's and right. uh, lots of regulations for right. that. And after working in the Civic Center for as many years as we have, we know how important that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes for a Park Avenue play, if you have a hundred people at the performance it's 45 minutes to get all the ladies through the ladies bathroom yeah so. yeah there have been times i've been tempted to say you know go up to the men's restroom and say lady coming yeah. through <laughs> you know and just clear them all out and let a bunch of ladies use that too right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. well i see that Jean has our website up nice mm -hmm. yeah and it does look nice and she's playing around with it yeah, I've been going through, you know, clicking on different things and looking at the different pictures and information. And it is it is really cool. They even have um, the, the diagrams of what phase one is going to look like. And cool. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, 
coming up soon, you have, I believe, is it number nine or number ten for the event? Nine. Wow. And so, PAC Awards number seven, seven. I seven. think. Oh, yeah. Right. So what is the date for that? At the, and that will be, of course, at the Civic Center. We'll point that out. But uh, what is the, do you know the date off the top of your head? I know you Deb- usually have your day timer with you. I don't. Feb- oh, man. February 27th. February 27th. Now, I'm just going to do a self-plug because we have won uh, uh, Best Performance of the Year two years in a row. <laughs> Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> for Two Wheels Got Talent. Uh, just to put out there, we're bucking for three. But mm-hmm. I promise if we win it a third year in a row, we will drop out. Okay. No, we will don't. drop out because because that's just not fair. <laughs> but you don't but get I am, to drop I, out. You know, after winning it twice, we, we are bucking for well, three. Well, I think you should. I, I don't think you should drop out. I think you should move up a weight class. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> yeah. I'm already doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and one thing I want to really stress is that we've never wanted to be the only show in town. Um, some people say, well, you know, we've already ha- got a civic theater, and now we have the Aaron Huff Cultural Center, and you guys have made a little theater, and, and why do you still need to do a theater? We've had questions like that. Uh, my vision has been, for the the eight, nine years we've been doing this, to have many theaters, to have a cultural feeling, a cultural town. You know, we, you see how uh, sports have expanded in this town when they built the Barber Complex, and it's just, there's no empty spaces for sports. We want to do the same thing, and we see the same thing in theater and in cultural arts. We're just so excited about it. Well, mm-hmm. Twila has a very uh, strong arts core. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. One thing I was amazed about when they came out and said, Chihuahua, you know, poorest uh, town in Washington <laughs> State. And then if you watched social media, the comments that came out of that from people outside of Chihuahua going, wow, I don't get it. Um, you know, and, and, what, and from people from living outside of town, one of the biggest comments I kept seeing was they have such a strong sense of community. They have such a strong sense of community. And our ratio for population to nonprofit groups <laughs> is huge compared oh, yeah. to, right. to to uh, uh, other cities. So so I agree with that. Uh, you know, we've got a maximum space here of about fifty people, and it works for little fundraisers. We've got another. We got a winter concert coming up on the nineteenth. But man, if we had a place where we could uh, pack in more people, and that's the same thing um, over at the Aaron Huff Center. It's a smaller space. You mm-hmm. you guys are doing something that that's going to be so good for the schools and, and the theater groups and the radio station and, and everything else you're talking about and trade shows and stuff. So uh, Chihuahua always has a lot going on, and, and uh, I don't see a problem with it either. And, and uh, I hate the naysaying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bec- well, and look at the big picture. The more this community does, the more draw we have. Now, maybe we don't want more population, but, you know, for a lot of us that live here at small town, we want to keep it that way. <laughs> but we do want tourism, right. and we do want people coming to town, and it's things like this that will change that and bring more dollars in our, into our community that helps the local businesses hire more people. Um, we're thrilled about, you know, I have a tower just waiting for equipment. And it just, it you know, makes me drool and I'm chomping at the bit. I'm like, oh, man, I want to stick antennas on this tower so bad, but that takes a, a huge amount of money. But even something like that, we're, all these things that go on in Chihuahua, now we're going to be able to broadcast them all the way into Spokane. And, and, and that's all going to help, you know, everybody working together and doing their thing. It's all going to help build the community. Well, Chihuahua Center for the Arts has, um, uh, the name was chosen partly because if you take a map of Stevens Ferry and Ponderay County, and you put a push pin right smack dab in the center of it, you have Chuila. Mm-hmm. Chuila Center for the Arts. Uh, we need to draw from uh, all three counties, from the Canadian border all the way to Spokane. Um, so you're buying into the same idea that the, our board has. The board is extremely committed to development of the arts as a means of bringing people to Chuila. Uh, there's going to be people visit from all over. We're going to have the kind of programming that people are going to hear about in Spokane. They're going to go, hey, let's take a drive up there. I want to play a round of golf uh, today, and we'll go see the show tonight. Uh, We're talking to the community about getting some more beds for people to stay in, working with the existing hotels and bed and breakfast um, to make sure that we can have a place for people to stay. Uh, We've already got one... uh, 
interested group that wants to do a history conference in our center in May after we open in April of 2017. Um, that would bring people here from all over the western United States. Um, so uh, the center means money for Chuila. It's as simple as that. Uh, when people come to visit, they've got to have a place to stay. They've got to have food to eat. They've got to put gas in their rigs. They're going to shop in our stores downtown. And so I think the chamber uh, has grown so much lately and become more um, excited about uh, the things that we're doing. Uh, and, and the mayor, uh, you know, people have said, hey, this is going to bring people to town. Yes, it is. Yeah, the chamber's great. They've been so they've been supportive of the radio station too. They they've got a great uh, overall view of, of growth for for Chuila, or at least growth in tourism. Right. I mean, I know we'd like some industry and more jobs too, um, but well, uh, yeah. this is our industry in 2015. Entertainment, uh, the internet, uh, everything has has drawn people closer together. I always say we want people to come here and leave their dollars and go back home again. <laughs> and if they decide to move here, we hope that they're an artist or a, a person uh, with the means to get involved in the community and help us out. Either be uh, an artist or an arti artistic supporter. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and I was just reading yesterday that for anybody to travel 100 miles for something, they need to have four hours worth of uh, things to do. And you put the golf course, you put the ski hill, you put a theater, you put other things together, and you can come up with four hours of something for somebody to do to come 100 miles. Not well, we got lots of stuff. we got the ski hill, and they're making changes. And, and, yeah. and, and you know, you can always bring Grandma along and send her to the casino. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, one thing we're missing out on, though, and I, and I will point it out, it, is kids. Y you know, I think we, we need something for when those people come to town, something that, that, that's um, youth or youth more youth-friendly. And I don't know how we do that. I know everybody's uh, screaming about the pool, but I, it was funny when you guys were talking about um, winning the lottery because I was sitting in here with some friends one night, and we were talking about... And it was funny what they all said. It was like, yeah, I don't understand people... Who, who win the wa lottery and, and five years later they're broke, you know, and they won $16 million. If I won $16 million, you know, of course I take care of my kids and that kind of stuff, but I would go help PACA and I would build a swimming pool and I would build a, you know, a health center and it was just, it was fine as everybody that was sitting in here had the same ideas, you know, of, of what they would do if they won a million dollars. But, but um, you know, I, I think that's important too is, you know, when people come bring in the whole family and having activities for the kids. Yeah. So we, we can't forget about that too. Oh. Yeah, and I hate to see our community give up on the idea of a swimming pool because the one we have won't work. I, I think that needs to be revisited. Now I really realize to do something like they did in Usk is like nearly impossible, but um, yeah, it'd be so great if we could have a facility like well, that. Well, the too. vision that I've heard for the pool um, is that you know a dream would be to have an uh, aquatic center of some sort near the hospital, so they could use it for therapy. And um, and then it would be open to the public to be used uh, by the kids. Um, the problem with the pool, the way I understand it, is that there is no way we can make it meet modern code. Correct. Um, the the way it's um, they use the chemicals in the water to to treat it is antiquated. Uh, it doesn't have a lift in it and everything has to be ADA now. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it's one of those deals where it has served its purpose and it's past its time. Um, we need to keep working towards that. One of the things that PAC is committed to is once the building is open, we will have a certain number of performances every year that are benefit performances. That means the radio station could do a benefit night for your tower. And we would give you the tickets to sell for that performance. It might be Park Avenue players, it might be stage time, it might be a, a show that you put together that you produce. Uh, but when people pay for their ticket, a percentage of that's going to go to the organization that's being served. We would think uh, it would be logical we would have a benefit for the food bank every year oh, yeah. or have an ongoing benefit uh, opportunity for the food bank at the center. Um, one of the theaters that I managed before, this was a very successful way of introducing new people to the theater 
because people would come because it was a benefit for something they cared about, and they get in the space and they see a good show. Because everybody's got a different cause that they love. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah. and, and again, we, we look, PACA looks at our niche in the community as supplementing what we've already got. We're not going to be producing everything. We have local producers. We have people who are capable of putting together a really good show. Uh, we're going to need help from the radio station when we do concerts to make sure people out there know what's going on. And um, uh, same with the business community. Uh, we're not going to have a coffee shop in our building. We've got a lot of good coffee shops in this little town right now. If uh, we need coffee, we know who to talk to. Um, if we, uh, we're not going to have a restaurant in the building. We have a lot of good restaurants, and they're getting better all the time right here in Chihuahua. So um, I think that we've had eight years to kind of sort out what is our purpose and how do we serve the community better, and how do we get this done? You know, it's okay that Chihuahua has all these coffee shops because the government just came out and said, Everyone should drink two to three cups of coffee a day because <laughs> it's right. got all these health benefits they didn't know about. So, so there you oh, go. Oh, dear. That means that you and Don are going to have to have four cups a day because Gene and I are having none. Oh. Now. <laughs> well, have you seen the size of my coffee cup? <laughs> <laughs> I call it the tinkered. That's his well, tinkered. We, we were talking about nonprofits on a, on a state, and, you know, our, our little town has a lot of nonprofits. The reality is that in America, the way the tax structure is set up and the way that all arts organizations work, uh, nonprofits make sense. In fact, in America, if you put all of the nonprofits together under one banner, it would be the largest corporation in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, financially speaking, they raise billions of dollars a year through donations. So uh, we're following the national model with what we're doing, asking for regional support from individuals. Uh, we will have um, an opportunity to apply for some grants, but we have to prove first that we can raise money on a local level. Yeah. If somebody said to me one day, do you have the ability to change your radio station into a commercial radio station? And I said, it's, it's a big expense and a lot of hassle, and, and, but yes, you can. And But I said... There is no way I would want to do that. It would ruin the whole community radio thing, yeah. you know, because then once you did that, then it's all about making it's all about the dollar and, and making money. And how can you make more profit? And and um, that just seems wrong to me for a community radio station. Well, there's I, I a, think there's, it would ruin it. Yeah, there's a reason why uh, Chautauqua is operated by a nonprofit organization. Um, community celebrations was formed with that primarily in mind is uh, how do we manage the, the money uh, so we can keep this going. Uh, if you look at the district uh, where the Arts Center is going in, uh, we have the Chuila Museum uh, right next next door. Um, they have their own uh, board, uh, Chuila Historical Society, which uh, works with the city who owns the building. Um, we have um, Chuila Recreation that runs the bowling alley. Uh, to the north and the Little League baseball field. Uh, you have Stevens County Historical Society, which is a nonprofit that runs the Cabin Project. Um, involved with us will be uh, Community Celebrations and uh, uh, the Arts Guild, which are nonprofit organizations. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Nonprofits are vital to our cultural and artistic. Uh, and, and I can see as this grows and tourism grows and, and beca because of, of of the actions of PACA in part, um, I can see where the Recreation Association is going to need to enlarge the Bowen Alley. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's, there's been talk about that. Uh, we have access to seats. We, we've, we've committed ourselves to buying new seats. So we have a number of suitors for the old seats that we've got that uh, – uh, and so one of the things we talked about is, you know, putting some new seats in bowling alley. Uh, I think the nonprofits will work together very nicely. I think there's going to be a lot of sharing back and forth, um, even more so when the center gets open, because they'll have a place to be um, for their larger events. Well, and I think we all work together so well 
you know, r- right now. Uh, um, I feel we've had a great relationship with PACA and with community celebrations, uh, the Arts Guild. Um, you know, I'm always tickled at the Arts Guild. We're, we were uh, we and I announced we were doing another concert on the 19th, and they're like, hey, we'll sponsor it. Y- you know, and that, that's that's just, uh, it's awesome how it all goes around. I so. where, Wherever I travel, I, uh, I went to the state nonprofit conference this year over in Bellevue. And uh, when I tell them about all the things that we've got going in our little town, um, they're just amazed. And even up in Colville, when I work with a lot of the people up there, they say, how does Chewila do it? You guys all seem to get along. You all seem to pull on the same rope. You all, you all are accomplishing so much. What's going on? And, and I told them, if you live in Chewila or around Chewila, which a lot of us do live in Stevens County near Chewila, um, you only do that because you want to be here. Mm-hmm. You're not doing it because you can make the most money. You're not doing it uh, uh, for any other reason than this is where you want to be. And we accept the fact that we're small. And we expect the fact that we don't have a lot of funding for everything that we want to do. Well, we kick it into gear and find that funding on a state, regional, and, and maybe even a national level. And tourism is a big part of that. Well, and a lot of people do are on a lot of committees or are on a lot of uh, nonprofits. You know, we have people that float and... I think you're yeah. in every one of them except <laughs> the radio board, Sharon. Yeah. So I, I think you need to start coming to our board meetings. For oh, the radio no, 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 no. But, uh, but that's how you yeah. work together is, is you've got somebody on this group that's also part of that group. And you kind of pull things and pull information into things. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Well, we're running out of time. Anything in closing um, that you want to say besides think about us if you're going to make a tax deductible donation? Oh, <laughs> that's a very good thing to say. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Scott, for saying that for us. Yes, tax deductibles. Yeah. Always yeah. The, 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 the little one thing you want to add in there. Yeah. So anything you guys want to add in closing? We're going to be going uh, into the press, into the independent here pretty soon with the plans for the building kind of outlining uh, how much money we're looking for and what it's going to be used for. Um, we will. We want everybody to check out our Facebook page and our um, website because uh, in the age that we live in, video, uh, we're working on three short five-minute promotional videos right now that will run on our website, but we will also show them in public um, at events. Uh, the Kalispell Tribe of Indians is helping us with that. Um, they're not giving money to us. They're uh, giving us personnel to help us uh, edit and and shoot, and they're advising us. Um, and that's that's what we're looking for. We're looking for partnerships, uh, but we also are looking for donations. So we're going to be out and about uh, from now on uh, with the idea that we we shoot for opening April of 2017. And the new website address once again. Chuila Center for the Arts dot com. All right. Gene checking it out. Pretty yeah, sharp. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Right. It All is. Right. It's All pretty right. snazzy. All right. Um are you both on the board? I am the chairman of the board You're and Don board. is a an advisor All to right. the board. So Chairman Sharon Ludwig and advisor <laughs> Don McLaughlin <laughs> from PECA. Right. All right. Thank you guys for both coming in. Oh, thank, thank you, you for letting much. us. All right. It was yeah. great to have you in the studio again. Uh, we shot the whole thing on YouTube, so, so I'll, I'll get that uploaded here over the weekend, so it'll be up there on Monday, and uh, we'll re-air this interview again, too. So. Very cool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank both. you both for coming in. Once again, Sharon Ludwig and Don McLaughlin, thank you guys for all your hard work that you do for the community of Chewila. All right. And that does it uh, for our morning show. I'm Scott. And I'm Jean. And this is KCHW 102.7. You have a great day and a great weekend.